Hey, come on in. Howdy. Is it still uh, is it still snowing us, huh? Oh, a little bit. My name is Denis Grignon, and I don't have a home. I live in a nice little rural Ontario town. I have many great friends, and I'm certainly not homeless. Far from it. My wife and I own a house that we had built on an acre and a half about 15 years ago in her hometown. She and I even played a big physical part in building it. Sure, hang on a second. It's open. I just want to put my mask on. Ooh, it's dusty. She is, without a doubt, my bestest friend and always will be. Almost immediately, we started raising two great boys in this house. Uh, are you still going to paint your room? Yes, I am. What are you going to do, Jonah? Are you done, Daddy? More in rainbow. But there's an underlying feeling that this place will never really be my home. It's not where I grew up or have roots. It's not where I feel I belong. I do have a hometown, of course, where I lived until I was about 20. Cornwall was the best choice. because. But no real attachment to it, so I can't really call it home either. And since where I now live is where I expect I'll be for the rest of my life, I'm faced with the challenge of what it will take to make it home. But what is home anyway? I mean, really is. We all define it differently, don't we? Is it as simple as an actual structure? Is it a city, a country, the place where your ancestors are buried? Or is home as intangible as, you know, a state of mind? My work as a comedian takes me across the country. So I set out to seek these definitions from different people from different parts in Canada, all in the hope of helping me to define and find my home. I tracked down one of my favorite musicians, Jason Plum, formerly of the Waltons, now frontman of The Willing. A guy who's got hundreds of thousands of fans, played huge venues everywhere, won Juno Awards. Really, I figured he was now based in Vancouver or LA or Nashville or Toronto. Nope, I found him in his home and hometown where he's married and raising a family in Regina. Born and raised here and lived here till I was about 21, then moved to Toronto for four or five years. And oh. then moved back here. Actually, six years in Toronto. I moved back here when I was about 28. Been here ever since. Okay, what was that time like in, in, in Toronto? You're, you're the musician, you're young. The time in Toronto was, I mean, that was the heyday of, uh, of my pop music career, for sure. It, it kind of it, it became my home. Um, actually, more Hamilton is where I, where I owned a, a home. Uh, so you actually bought? You bought yeah, a place? I bought a house. So you uh, said well, roots. Well, I, I actually was living with a woman who owned a house. I should be clear about that in case she's listening. Uh, and uh, I did. I was laying roots down. And uh, when that relationship ended, unfortunately, I moved or I, I came back home to Regina just to recharge the batteries. It was just like I ha had every intention of going back to uh, to Ontario, having sort of left one dwelling, and uh, you know forcibly. And having to go somewhere else and sort of being homeless uh, for that 24 hours that it took me to get home and to get to my folks' place. Um, I probably never wanted to be home any more than I did on that drive. It was cold and dark, and uh, I was in a, a really lonely place. What was that like when you drove, when you pulled into the driveway? Well, it was, <laughs> it was, I felt like I was a bit in the twilight zone just because of being awake for so long. Um, but it was for sure a relief and just, uh, could take a deep breath and just felt like nothing's like the arms of your parents, you know, to welcome you home. It's that's uh, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, when I moved, when I when I came back here, I, I found myself really liking it and wondering why I would ever want to leave. It seemed to have everything else that I needed, you know. So something really grabbed me. It was it was my it was my my solid rock. It was the place that was always here for me and and really proved to be true when I came home uh, after this breakup, and uh, my friends and my family were here. You know, um, so there was this familiarity that that uh, you know that I had tastes of as we were touring through Canada and stopping in Regina um, through the years of touring that that were previous to this, but I felt I just felt at home. Like I felt like this is. It was it was comfortable. It was familiar, and it seemed safe to me. It just uh, seemed to be a place where I could just really unwind and be myself and, and relax. Is that how you define it? The the, the comfort and, and the safety. Is that what home? How you define home? I think, man, that's that's a really hard one. But defining home, to me, would would be um, the place that that is always there for you. You know, the 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 place you the place you you're dying to get back to home uh became 
where I wanted to get back to, you know, I was always away. If you're away, you're away from home, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, what did home mean to you when you were away? And you, you toured a lot on the road. Uh, it meant my own bed and, um, not having hotel food every, every day. Um, and it meant, you know, being with, being with, uh, with someone I cared about a lot, you know, um, and in, in Ontario, it was, it was that special woman. And, uh, was that home then? Did you feel it was home? I, I did, yeah, uh, but not deep down in my soul. Deep down in my soul, I've always thought of Saskatchewan as my home um, and have always said so. You know, we've always been, we were always the band from Saskatchewan. The worst case for me is, is more when people don't acknowledge where they're from and where they grew up. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's artists that, that grew up here in Saskatchewan till, till quite late in their life and, you know, won't really acknowledge it. Uh, Why do you think that is? Well, I think that clearly they've discovered that home to them is somewhere else and that, uh, um, I don't know if there's a, an embarrassment or that's the way I see, I see if you mm -hmm. can't, if you can't sort of own up to where you're from, um, you don't have to flag wave it by any means, but uh, some acknowledging is, is good. I think I'll be here for the rest of my life. I'm pretty, pretty confident in that. Comfortable in it? I'm completely comfortable in it. As long as I can get away in the winters once in a while, I'm really happy uh, living here. Um, I own a house here. My studio is here. My bandmates are all here. Um, I have no reason to be anywhere else. Um, I love it here. You know, it's just, it's, it's a part of who I am. And I love the fact that I can, you know, that I can walk down the street and see high school teachers still. I'm not that kind of girl you'd ever get to go home. And there ain't enough booze in the world could ever get me to go. That is Jason Plum and his band The Willing. Jason has some real insight into how he defines his home, familiar, safe, his solid rock. My name is Denis Grignel, and this program is called Home on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM 169. Next message. Hi, my name is Mahua. I currently live in Calgary, although my home address has changed a number of times throughout the years. Um, an Indian by background, I grew up in Thailand and later moved to Canada for university. And um, in my earlier years, I definitely used to struggle with finding home in my changed physical surroundings. But uh, uh, over the years, slowly, I learned to associate home with closed loved ones instead of, um, instead of a physical place. And that's definitely helped me a lot uh, to ease my earlier sense of dislocation. As long as I'm closely connected to my loved ones, just through frequent conversations, I, I feel grounded and I feel at home. End of message. A few hundred kilometers north of Jason Plum's home in Regina, I head to Saskatoon. It's where I meet Roxanne Ham, a woman who's lived in Saskatchewan, Alberta, and PEI. She's run a couple of bed and breakfasts, so she knows what it's like to make others feel at home in her home. She also knows what home isn't. One province we lived in, it was all about accumulation of the big trucks, the big... Can you, know, you say, what, can, can you say what province that was? That was Alberta. Oh, okay. <laughs> Families down the street that would drive their kids to school in a Hummer, and uh, I was walking to take the bus into town. So Why did I, that not feel like home to you when you were in that situation? Um, we just felt that it was more about accumulation of things that you could show off to your neighbors versus um, let's get out to the ball game and watch our kid play ball and, and you know that kind of stuff. So um, we didn't find it as connecting as we did, for example, when we lived in Prince Edward Island where... Anybody that you met was warm and enveloping and, and uh, had real family values, just like we do. We feel that home is where we are and as a couple, and we make each place that we've lived in a home versus it doesn't really matter what, what the, uh, the building is. It just has to be us. And then we've ha you know, raised three children, and what we want out of our life is that when our children come home, they feel relaxed, they feel comfortable, they don't feel like we were putting any kind of strain on them. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of times in the past when we'd go home to our own families, it was always, well, there's these expectations and don't say the wrong thing and don't sit in the wrong chair and that kind of stuff. So we, we, don't, we want people to feel comfortable in our own home, especially our own children. It sounds like we, the home you tried to create was in many ways not the home 
you remember, you and Rod remember. Is that, is that right? Crazy? Well, um, on Rod's side, it was quite warm and fuzzy. I mean, he grew up in a family of seven children, so um, it, it was fairly acceptable to be yourself. Whereas I think in my own situation, we had more expectations, and um, f- I felt like when we went home to visit, we were company. There, there's something about this province that draws, that keeps people here. In a sense of home, what is it about Saskatchewan? Is it the topography, the weather? What is it that, that people go, yeah, this, I, I don't care what other people think well, of Saskatchewan. This is my home. Yeah, I think that, you know, we're, we're like all Canadians. We think um, we're too tough to let anything like the weather or um, bad seasons get us down. We're, we're going to, you know, we're great Saskatchewan Knights. We're Rough Rider fans. We stick together. We're, you know... Um, part of this community. So are you saying the bad weather makes it easier to call this home? Uh, in, a, in a way. Like, I, I'm quite proud of the fact that I utilize winter. I, I don't shun it. I don't, I'm not afraid of it. It's let's go out and cross-country ski. Let's go snowshoeing, you know. I think that you have to have a home base, you know, whether it's, you know, in Saskatoon or Regina or Charlottetown, wherever it happens to be. Um, and that home base is um, what you make it. Um, my husband and I were talking about this last night and we, we talked about, you know, when we were, when we were younger, we took the kids camping, we'd make our little home in the bush with the camper. And what we really loved about that is there were no distractions like television and, and, you know, the kids next door coming to get the other, our kids. It was just, this is our family and we're having fun. And the kids remember that like, like the best memories, the fondest memories. What is home is where wherever Rod and I are together and making a, a life. Yep. Next message. My name is Chris from Janetville, Ontario, and home for me is a boat. With water being the largest cover for this planet Earth, a sailboat in a safe anchorage is a great place to call home. End of message. I've been thinking a lot about home lately, what it is, where it is, how it's different for everyone what home is to me. But the idea of home really piqued my interest almost 25 years ago, a conversation I had in Montreal with a comic friend, Sherry O'Brien, whose father was in the Canadian military. I remember she told me her friends used to pity her because she moved so often. So, well, she really didn't have a home. To which she'd tell them, no, my home's the whole country. Hello. Sherry O'Brien? To this green all. I tracked down Sherry where she's been living for 15 years in Northern Ireland. And I wondered if she'd remember that conversation we had way back in 1991. I do remember that. Um, It's something that I I still tell people because I work at Titanic Belfast now and here in Belfast. And we have tourists all the time from Canada. And of course, I lived all over the country. So I have an attachment to Saskatchewan because I lived in both Saskatoon and Moose Jaw. I have an attachment to Montreal. I spent time there. I lived there for a little while. And Frank Mahovlich made me a hamburger one day in our <laughs> home in Beaconsfield. And uh, I lived in Halifax. I was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia. But in that whole time when you were moving around from all those different places in Canada, and you yourself said that, uh, you know, you had attachments to them, but, but were, were they home? Was it enough? Yeah, I, I could because, um, you know, home's where the heart is, that old saying, but it, it's true. And I had to start all over again. And my life was a series of that, a series of having to always start over. It didn't matter where I was living. Home's, home's in your head all the time. And and even now to this day, when I go on the road, if I, if I go on a vacation or if I'm on the road do it for work or anything like that, I actually move into my hotel room. You know how some people leave all their stuff in their suitcase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't. I take everything out of my suitcase and I put it in all the drawers. I put all my stuff away in the bath. This is the first thing I do when I go in the room, by the way. I don't just leave it there and relax and do something else. I take everything out of my suitcase, put it all away. I put everything away in the bathroom that I'm going to need. I put all my clothes where I want them. I set the bed up like I want. And sometimes, depending on, like when I was on tour in Canada as a comic, I would bring pictures with me and I would set up pictures around the room. You needed that tactile experience. Yes, I literally moved in. Wherever I was, I moved in. And that became my space. Mm -hmm. And it does give you a tenuous sense of where your actual territory is, where you feel most comfortable and most secure. Uh, I would set up my inner sanctum to be the way I wanted it, no matter where I was. And that was my, that was my security. 
Even you know, my, my sense of nest, really, you know? So that inner sanctum could have been your hotel room, or when you were a kid, it was your bedroom, maybe? Or... Yeah, it would have been my bedroom, yeah. It would have been the area around my house, too. Whenever we moved somewhere new, I would go for walks in the area and try and find the, the nearest patch of forest. I spent a lot of time as a kid running around the, the local forests. I was really good at catching crayfish and garter snakes, the stuff the other girls didn't didn't really get into and, and tree forts i loved tree forts i love tree houses but uh belfast felt really familiar and comfortable to me from the moment i set foot in it How come? and there's really no reason for that because my family has been in canada since the 1700s i don't have any direct links to the place there really was no reason for me to end up where i am except that this sort of innate uh, curiosity and a neat sort of drive to go to Ireland and specifically to go to Belfast. Hmm. I like Sherry's idea of setting up an inner sanctum of sorts to get that sense of home. I might even try building a treehouse to achieve it, but I'm pretty sure it'll be on this side of the ocean. My name is Denis Grignon and you're listening to Home on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM 169. Hello, Danielle French. You may have seen Danielle French's home, South Pond Farms in central Ontario. It served as an audition space on that CBC TV reality show, Over the Rainbow. Sprawling hills, picturesque, magnificent. It's where she lives and runs her business. For her and her four daughters, South Pond is also home. Something Danielle admits took her some time to find. To be honest, like I was one of those people that had a house disease and I moved, we moved um, I think 11 times in about 10 years. And the reason we did that is because I would, you know, drive around in my neighborhood and see a house and say, okay, great, that looks like a perfect place to live in. Let's renovate and move into that. Was it house disease or was it home disease? Well, you know, it's funny that you should ask that because I always felt that one day I would move out of Toronto, that I was never real, it was never home for me. Um, I just never felt, uh, I mean, it's a great city and I love all the neighborhoods. And But for me personally, it was never a home. And I had come, these come? daughters. What was it that made it not home? I don't know. I just didn't feel, I think there is that connection to the land that I just missed. Having um, a house in the city, you know, it has all the stuff, has all your belongings. But um, rooted out here, I feel more of a connection to creating a home environment because of cooking, because of gardening, because of tending the, the ground. Um, the kids, when they're here, they have like a huge, um, I know this sounds crazy, but just with the fire and the smell of fire and the, the smell of the grass being cut and the hay being taken away, uh, all those um, sensory elements add up to your equation to home that's how you define home is just those all the, the smells the sounds yeah and... the smells and the sounds the um the smells for sure and um that's an interesting thing again when i go back to vermont to see my folks i walk in the door there's that smell of my mom's cooking or something that is always no matter if she and i make exactly the same thing it smells different at home than it does here does that make sense yeah yeah it and sounds, it sounds like odor it has to, a yeah. lot to do with how you define home yeah and i just said it again it makes it smells different at home than it does here but here is my home i meant really my home my childhood home so maybe there's two homes that you can have place that you if many people i'm sure have no affinity to a childhood place they don't it, how about you um, well, I do, but it, you know, I, I think it's more of a connection to the land, uh, because of Vermont, because of the hills, because of obviously my parents, mm -hmm. who I'm close to, but how we grew up in the country. So all those years of traveling around and living in Europe and, uh, living in Toronto and living in Montreal, um, those places didn't have the same home-like connection for me as here. Your sense of home is where you uh, feel at peace and where you feel um, surrounded by love, where you are able to give love freely because you are um, content and because you get some sort of spiritual connection of the place around you. But it has I don't think it has to do with the bricks and mortar. So after living in a dozen or so houses in 10 years, including Toronto's Tony Rosedale, Danielle French found home in the smells and sounds of her South Pond farm. 
My name is Denis Grignot, and you're listening to Home, a special holiday program on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM 169. After the break, we'll continue our exploration of home and how we all define it differently and find out if I finally find my home. <laughs> 